Hey everyone, welcome back to the ESP 32 Beginner Masterclass and uh, it's awesome to have you here again. Uh, so far in this series, we've you know made an LED blink automatically. Pretty cool, right? Uh, but today we're going to take it a step further. We're adding a button so that you can control an LED with just a touch. Just like real devices. So yeah, let's uh, learn how to read real-world inputs using the ESP32's GPIO pins. But here's the big question. Why do we even need digital inputs in the first place? Well, think about it for a second. All the devices you use every single day, they all need a way to get your input, right? Like, uh, check this out. A calculator, you press buttons to enter numbers. An ATM machine, you tap keys to type in your pin. A TV remote, an elevator, your microwave oven, every one of them reacts when you press a button. So what's happening there? All of those are actually examples of digital input. You're giving the device a signal, like on or off, or maybe yes or no, just by pressing a button. And that's exactly what we're going to do with the ESP32 too. We're teaching it to um, recognize when something is on or off, like when you press a button and when you don't. All right, so stick around because in this lesson, we'll wire up a push button to the ESP32. And by the end, you'll be able to control your LED with a single touch. Pretty awesome, huh? All right, so let's talk about digital inputs. And honestly, it's actually really simple. Uh, imagine a regular light switch for a second. You flip it on, the light turns on, you flip it off and the light turns off. That's exactly how a digital input works. It's either on or off. No in between, no halfway. Uh, now with the ESP32, we can connect things like uh, buttons, switches, or even some basic sensors to its GPIO pins. And what it does is it reads whether each pin is in an on or off state. In tech terms, and don't worry, this part's easy. That just means the pin is reading either high, which is about 3.3 volts, or low, which is 0 volts. So, like, when you press a button, the ESP32 sees something like, Oh, okay. This pin just went high. That probably means the button is pressed. And then when you let go, the signal drops back down to low. And now the ESP32 knows the button is no longer being pressed. It's kind of like giving your ESP32 a pair of eyes so it can sense when something happens. And that's uh, exactly how we make our projects respond to touch, clicks, or even motion. All right, so let's quickly take a look at what you'll need to follow along today. Don't worry, these are all super basic parts you probably already have in your kit. First up, a push button. That's uh, basically the star of this whole video. We already have the onboard LED from last time. Remember that? And next, you'll need a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Uh, this is going to be our pull down resistor. And I'll explain exactly why we need it and what it does in just a second. It's pretty cool once you get it. And of course, your usual stuff a breadboard, some jumper wires, and your trusty ESP32 development board. Now, if you're like me and want to skip the wiring jungle, you can also just use one of these a tiny switch module super handy and makes life a lot easier. Here's how you connect it. This pin goes to GPIO4 on the ESP32. The second pin, uh, connect that to GND. And finally, the third pin goes to 3.3 volts. That's it. Like, that's literally all the wiring you need. Super clean, super simple. All right, we're done with the hardware setup. Now let's move on and talk about why that resistor actually matters. All right, so let's talk about this resistor for a second. Uh, like, why do we even need it? See, when you connect a button directly to a GPIO pin and the button isn't pressed, well, that pin kind of gets confused. It just starts, you know, floating. It's not sure if it should be reading high or low because it's not really connected to anything solid. And to make things worse, floating pins can actually pick up like random noise from the environment. Tiny signals from nearby devices, power cables, or even your own hand can mess with it. Uh, so the ESP32 might just randomly say, Oh, I think the pin is high. 
even though nothing's happening. That kind of behavior, we call it a floating pin. And yeah, it leads to some really unpredictable results. So how do we fix that? Well, we add what's called a pull-down resistor. It's a small resistor that gently pulls the voltage on that pin down to ground, to zero volts, when the button isn't pressed. That way, your ESP32 always sees a clean, stable, low signal when nothing's being pressed and a solid high only when you actually press the button. Basically, it's like giving your ESP32 clear instructions. No noise, no confusion, no weird surprises. Okay, so uh, don't worry. Let me explain this in uh, a much simpler way. Uh, just imagine this is your ESP32 right here. And let's say we're working with pin number 4. It's super common, easy to use. Now, here's a switch. Or a button, you know. We're going to connect one end of the switch to 3.3 volts, right? And the other end, that's going to GPIO4. Alright, now here's where things get a bit uh, weird if we don't do it right. When the switch is open, like not pressed, what exactly is connected to pin 4? Nothing really. It's just kind of floating in space. There's no connection to 3.3 volts and also no connection to ground. So what happens? Well, the ESP32 gets confused. It's like, uh, is this pin high? Is it low? I have no idea. And because it's not tied to any solid voltage, it can pick up, you know, random noise from nearby wires, your hand, even your phone. and. Uh, yeah, this is what we call a floating pin. It leads to like really unpredictable behavior. Sometimes the pin might randomly show as high, sometimes low, even when you're doing nothing. So how do we fix that? Easy. We just add a little something called a pull down resistor. Basically, we connect a resistor from pin 4 down to ground or 0 volts. This way, when the switch is not pressed, the resistor gently pulls the pin down to low, like a clean zero volts. And the ESP32 now sees a solid low instead of just guessing. Then the moment you press the button, boom, 3.3 volts goes straight to pin 4. And the ESP32 sees a nice solid high. So yeah, that's why the pull down resistor is uh, super important. It just makes sure your ESP32 isn't confused by noise and always read stable values. Low when idle, high when pressed. I hope that like clears it up. And hey, if you're still unsure or want me to explain a part again, just drop a comment below. All right, so before we move to the code, let's quickly go over a couple of things. Uh, now, in order to read input voltages, like from a pin or a switch, we're gonna use two functions. The first one is the pin mode function which we use to set the mode of a pin. So it takes two parameters. The first one is um, the pin number. That's the pin from where we're actually reading the voltage. In our case, it's pin 4. But hey, you can use any other digital pin you prefer. And the second parameter, right, that defines the mode. And since we're reading input, we'll set that to input. And yeah. Since we're just setting the pin mode once, we usually place this inside the setup function. After that, we're done with it. Now the second function we need is digital read. This one is used to actually read the voltage from the pin. It just takes one parameter, uh, basically the pin number you want to read from. Now once that's all set up, here's what happens. When the ESP32 detects 3.3 volts on that pin, the digital read function returns of 1, which basically means high. But if there's no voltage or it's below the threshold, then it returns 0, which means low. So yeah, it's kind of a simple on or off check, depending on whether that pin is getting 3.3 uh, volts or not. Alright, let's move to the code. Alright, let's write the code together. Go ahead and open up your Arduino IDE and uh, follow along with me. So what we're going to do here is make the ESP32 turn on an LED when a button is pressed and turn it off when the button isn't. Simple stuff. But like really powerful when you think about it. Okay, first up, 
we're going to use define to uh, create labels or uh, aliases for our GPI opens. So instead of writing just four or two all over our code, we'll use names like button pin and LED pin. Uh, that way it's easier to read and honestly, way easier to change later if we ever move things around. Now let's look at the setup function uh, and this runs just once. When your ESP32 turns on or gets reset. Inside it, we use the pin mode function to tell the ESP32 how we plan to use each pin. So pin mode uh, takes two things. First, the pin number like uh, GPIO 4 or 2 or in our case, uh, those friendly labels, button pin and lady pin. Second, the mode. That tells the ESP32 whether we're reading input or sending output. Uh, so here's what we're doing. We set button pin as an input uh, because we're reading if the button is pressed and we set LED pin as an output because we're sending power to the LED to turn it on or off. Pretty straightforward so far, right? Okay, cool. Uh, now let's jump into the loop function. This is where the magic keeps happening. The ESP32 runs this part again and again, like many times per second. Inside the loop, we use digital read to check the current state of the button. That function gives us back one of two values. High, if the button is being pressed low, if it's not being pressed, we'll save that result in a variable called button state. So we can use it right after. Okay, now here comes the logic part. We use a basic if statement to decide what to do. If button state is high, that means, yep, the button is pressed. So we turn the LED on using digital write LED pin high. Otherwise, if it's slow, meaning the button is not pressed, we turn the LED off using digital write LED pin low. And uh, that's it. Super clean, super effective. Now go ahead and upload that code to your ESP32 and let's see it in action. I'm going to press the button here. Uh, the LED lights up, let it go. And the LED turns off just like that. All right. You're now officially reading inputs and controlling outputs. And that, my friend, is the heart of embedded systems. This is the kind of stuff that powers smart gadgets, home automation, and way more. So yeah, nice work.